Welcome to Hog and Zog, where one makes and the other rates. So you remember how I said we we're going to do Wing Gundam? I lied. We're actually not going to do that. We're going to work on a Christmas present. This guy. Orcs. Ooh, a big greeny meanie. <laughs> big, <laughs> big greeny meanie. I refuse to use that one and you use it anyway. Well, yep. Well, here we go. This big greeny meanie. Uh, I got him for a Christmas present. My buddy Vince. Every year I've made him a uh, handmade or at least a hand-painted gift, and this year's no different, so I'm gonna make him this guy. Now I'm gonna struggle to open up this box with one hand. I love how you feel obligated to show all of this. Dude, I had two like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna make hours. mental notes about <laughs> all the things that I feel are unnecessary, such as it. you opening the box. This, it was very necessary. Look at look you, at the struggle. You struggling to take this. You could have popped it down, cut, and all the pieces were out. No. That would have been easy. There it comes. He's, uh, he's out. He's, he's just, doing one good revolution. See these uh, really subpar McFarlane paint? Terrible. These, these McFarlane toys, like, they look really cool. They're really neat. I'm glad they're making Warhammer figures. However, I feel that their paint is horrendous really bad zero out of ten please repaint don't like them so they're just figures right they're not they're not oh yeah i use my black magic to uh, turn it into a bunch of pieces <laughs> um i that... added some minecraft music and some minecraft stuff in there. <laughs> i i unfortunately don't hear the minecraft music which is a shame uh, there's look at that mouth dude it's freaking gross that is pretty and it's good. like very monochromatic in one color. Oh, look, it's copper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not even reflective copper. Yeah. This was also it's a huge pain. Oh, look, it's a finger puppet. A huge pain to take apart. Oh, I'm sure. I oh. that, that first Lucario, not the Lucario that I'm doing for our next video, but the first Lucario I did for a co-worker, um was a figure and it was kind of a pain in the butt to do yeah i like how you're just priming on your porch in the rain yeah i i don't have a lot of choices yeah. <laughs> this is this is all i have also i ran out midway through and you can tell that oh. now i'm just using a uh, sealant to cover it <laughs> also oh. this is a uh, layer paint so layer paints from uh citadel mm -hmm. are very um transparent so they require a lot of layers to build up and uh yeah this is a super time lapse of me spending like i don't know maybe two hours just freaking layering up this stuff but look it Ooh, looks, that looks nice. really good it looks like you know when you do the 3d model like in the program that's the kind of green it had with Hell no yeah. layers, it was just like green with like some weird white. I'm ready to be 3D printed now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to add some depth. With the. Uh, so I'm... these, these uh, washes, I'm just putting it in kind of like the darkest crevices. Uh, you know, green skin. I like to do blue for um, the shadows just because it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have known that was blue. Yeah, it's like a really dark kind of um, greenish blue. You um, know what? I'm going to assume you didn't do this, but if you had some UV resin and put it in his mouth to give it a more uh, shiny look. Oh, they have uh, this stuff called Art Coat. It's just basically like a paintable gloss finish. And it kind of does the same thing. There's actually some like glue called Uhu Glue. Mm -hmm. that people use when you see the models that have like snarling wet stuff all over their face and stuff like that they use that oh, okay. and it leaves like nasty strands and stuff that's pretty neat i've just been watching a lot of that north of the border gentleman yeah uh, uh and he's been doing all his realistic stuff whenever they use the mouth he'll use the yeah, uv resin poured in there and it always looks pretty pretty grotesque yeah, yeah. It, it can look pretty gnarly look at me go more layers. So fast. I don't know why I chose to do this. Because <laughs> you appreciate your friend for some reason. I, I appreciate him a lot, but uh, this is uh, this was a mistake. 
this was a huge <laughs> mistake. And you can see coming up here that I've chosen to airbrush instead. Bam! Time to take out the gun. Nice. One handed. One handed. Bam. I actually kind of, I miss B. I, I'm sad that you're able to just paint outside because I can't paint in my garage right now. That's kind of sad. Dude, it's it's freaking cold. Oh, is it? You don't you don't envy this. Oh, okay. It I was like envy. negative 20 on Friday. <laughs> Oof. But not while you were painting this. Oh, no. Uh, I, yeah. I wouldn't have painted it if it was negative 20. That would have yeah, been exactly. some idea. The fact that you're able to be outside right now and paint is what I'm, is what I'm saying. Oh, not anymore. I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> That's a shame. I'm sorry for your loss of paint space. Yeah, me too. Just, just move your wife, and <laughs> in her place, put a painting station. Let's see, we share the same space, though. So. <laughs> That's impossible. Yes. No, just, you can just sleep underneath it. Underneath oh. it, you know. Yeah. Oh, like a bunk bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have a bunk bed that's a. I mean, half I'm saying more like space, half a sleeping space. I mean, that's that was the original point of my of my floating loft bed. Yes. Oh yeah, the sex was one. so that yeah it was so that I could paint. You know, I could have like a painting space underneath it. Oh yeah, and then I moved into the bigger room, and now it's not up anymore. But that was yeah. the idea at first. We should go into great. that a little bit. So, the people who don't know don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> that's true so let me explain it i live in a very small apartment um the thousand square feet uh with three bedrooms uh to get three bedrooms two of the bedrooms are very small um maybe oof, eight nine feet by maybe 10 feet by eight feet it's probably pretty good so it, it's enough for i mean i had a queen size bed uh, it was enough for that bed and my desk. That was about it. Uh, on top of that, I slept on the floor at that time. I'm really enjoying this, by the way. I am still <laughs> watching what you're doing here. Um, good, good, good paint there. <clears throat> um, lots of silver. Oh, lots of, oh, it's no. so annoying when that happens. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I get so annoyed. Um, yeah, I really. Trish, now that I'm now that I'm. Up. Yeah. Now that I'm back inside, it's falling like onto carpet. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> um, but to combat this, this problem of a very small bedroom, it is, it is relatively tall. Now I'm a, you know, six foot and I can reach up with my long gangly arms and you know, my tips barely touch the ceiling. And I was like, well, you know what? I don't need a whole lot of sleeping space above me. So, so long as it's, you know, five, six feet in the air, airbrush center. I can air, model air. Dark Earth. I can sleep. Dark Earth. But I wanted to keep my queen size bed because I've got a lovely girlfriend, Jag, right next to me. Um, uh, so, yeah, on, with, with the help of our other buddy, Rustic, um, he, Rustic helped me make a bed frame and then uh, Zag came over and we bolted the sides of it and bolted it to the ceiling um, and to the wall so that there were no posts coming down. Uh, and it was a it was a floating loft bed. I would ha I'd step onto my desk. That was a good green liquid chrome. I've heard mixed reviews about so this stuff is great uh, sorry to inter interrupt your story but this stuff is great no but no. uh you have to wait for it to cure for forever it takes about a yeah. week to fully cure uh but the results are great um uh, also what you didn't see there is a cut of me leaving for like a minute because i i physically could not take off that <laughs> that top half i had to go get some pliers <laughs> and undo it Good lord. Oh, okay, but you're not using like it as a pen. You're using it at, to, to brush. Yeah, you can take out the actual paint and then airbrush it. Oh, okay. Uh, it's okay. kind of hell on your airbrush, so I don't like to do this very often, but the results are hard to argue. So I really wanted to have chrome for these pistons, so I just kind of did it. Um, but yeah, check it out. Look how shiny. That is shiny. Hey, look at the face. Yeah, they're... they're, they're ooh. Got some nice 
Do this you do much with washes? Um, so this one I did a lot with washes, mainly because that's just kind of how the, the grim dark of 40,000 kind of goes. Yeah, hand wave motion. Yeah. Uh, but this one, I was doing a lot of kind of bulk painting. We're just doing a lot of, you'll, you'll see it a little bit later, but I was doing okay. a lot of, I forget what the technique is called. I'm kind of blanking on it. Um, now you get to watch me struggle, put this, this figure <laughs> together. This is, this is the struggle bus part. And I left it all in here because these pieces don't go back together very well. So taking it apart. It was really easy because I could just put a hairdryer to it or boil the pieces. Now I can't do that because I'll ruin the paint. Now I'm just Oof. trying really freaking hard to get this stupid peg back in there. Oh, so they so they were in there with relative difficulty, and then you added layers of paint. Yeah, so, I, so now they're even tighter. Now it's harder. You thought it was hard before, but now it's even harder. And you can kind of see on my fingertips. I'll, I'll kind of move my hand away here in a second. It's literally coming off of the figure as as yeah. I'm doing this. So I had to stop and seal it. Yeah, see, it's, it's all over my freaking yeah, hand. I was, about to, I was just about to ask, had you sealed no, it? No, I did not. I was. I just wanted to put it together, and then I realized, oh no, mistakes have been made. Stumpy, stumpy. But and then I tried to do this one too. This one. Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. I never, I never thought I'd put myself in a position where I was fighting a plastic toy. So I decided <laughs> to put more paint on it, anyways. And <laughs> yeah. a, can't can't get this in. Let's make it harder. It, oh yeah, for sure. Let's let's do some washes. And washes are just a really easy way to get a lot of detail to pop because these these things had like like this one the pants. There was a really nice texture on it that I wanted to bring back out. So I just use the wash to kind of emphasize that stuff. Look at that. Hey. Maybe I asked too early because I feel like that blue wash would have worked really well on the orc's face, and it looks a bit too clean to me. Well, now it does because uh, you'll see it a little bit later. But what I do is that I put that wash on there, and it makes it really dark like this. But then what you have to do is that you have to rebuild mm. those layers that okay. you did beforehand to yeah. kind of blend it a little bit. Um, I think the technique is called feathering, where they have like it's basically go down in in um, intensity, go lighter in intensity, go dark in intensity. They do it a lot with swords and stuff like that, power swords, and it looks crisp, real good. Not really it with gigantic orc faces, but okay. But I ju I just asked them in too early. That's nah, all good. So this take your really nasty brush, take some weathering. Uh, Tania stuff and just uh, smear poop all over this. <laughs> Delicious. Mm, chocolate. <laughs> this is so nice. Dude, this is a super nice way to weather, especially if you already have like a couple layers of paint and stuff. So, what you do is that you saturate it completely and then you clean it. But we'll watch the saturating part a little bit here. And me struggling to get it to stand up. Solvent. And you just do this. Oh, yeah, and you can't just put it down on your mat because then it'll just stain your mat. Yeah. It did stain my mat. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that in here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I 100% go back to that. You definitely want to use solvent to clean your brushes and then uh, keep the tips good too. But here we go. Take some solvent, take some paper towels. And just uh, clean your really nasty piece of whatever. I'm very off camera. There was a lot of this footage like this, and I cut it. So we're about to go to our first cut on this. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's hard to, to maintain center. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll see with mine, I do a wider view with all of my stuff. I'd, and then I bring it close. So I just need to put, like, find like a headband for my phone, and that'll be a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could work. Let's just get a straight POV of me doing stuff. <laughs> People will be thrown up by the end of the video because I'll keep bobbing my head. I also hyperlapse everything, whereas this isn't like you just sped it all up. Well, a lot of it was hyperlapsed. There are a lot of hyperlapses in this, but um, I was kind of trying to just get a really good idea of the process. So I, I took a lot of footage. And yeah, I, yeah. I think I kind of figured out what the good balance of hyperlapse to 
just raw footage there is. So I, I'm learning, learning. This is only the second yeah, video, so. That, that's true, that's true. I guess I, guess I shouldn't be critical because I'm gonna have to do mine here in a minute and you're just gonna tear oh, apart. I get to rate, <laughs> I get to rate. I can't wait to rate. I'm gonna rate you oh, so you hard. <laughs> You'll have a good time because I I know I sent you the photo and I'm not sure if you realized the glaring mistake and the glaring issue. Oh. Um, I don't but I will I'll bring it back up. Don't worry. Okay. I'll be very critical of everything. Yeah. I'll just think everything please, is a mistake. Everything is a mistake. How dare you? Everything everything was probably a mistake. My airbrush. I I remember complaining to you every single time. It was not having time, fun time. <laughs> I was not. It's not happy. It was not happy about the new room. So check it out, man. Look at that. It's nice Ooh. and grainy and gross. It's the thing with doing uh, weathering. Is that you have to make it look really nice, and then you gotta mess it up. It's gonna make it look real gross. All that effort into making it look good, gone. Well, by your own hands. It's just, it's double the effort. You can never just have a nice thing. If it's orcs, it's gotta be gross. So you gotta believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> believe in it! The wad! Oh yeah, here we go. See? Look at all this stuff. And I stained my, I stained my little wet palette. I stained my, my actual desk. Just gotta wipe that off. Gonna wipe off my geisha. <laughs> Sorry. Please forgive me. You look like you have coffee stains on you now. <laughs> I need to get a proper cutting mat. I saw a really nice display cutting mat at work the other day. Yeah. This uh, is a good brand. Then I, Not sponsored, but this is a good brand. Uh, yeah. They seem really nice. Um, but then I've been sick for the past week, so I'm sure it's probably gone. No. And if it's not, I'd like to try to get it. Um, new type. They usually have a lot of display stuff. Also, do you like my yeah. Zenitsu sticker that I put on to get a good idea of where the center of the camera was? I was going to comment that I don't like that you used him and that he's right there, so I hope he gets dirty and cut up and destroyed. He does not, but he will. I absolutely despise Zenitsu, so hot take. Okay. I, I don't like that character at all. I don't think anybody does. Oh, no, dude. His following is humongous. It's really <laughs> upsetting, honestly. Why, I don't what? understand why people like him, but... I, yeah. They do. They improved his character by putting him to sleep. Oh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> oh, here we go. When you more, remove... Oh, oh, more struggling. Difficulties. Oh, dude, oh, just, just wait for it. This is going to be the best struggle ever. I should put some, some boss music overlaying this, but just wait for it. So, super time lapse of, of struggling to get this hip joint in, right? But uh -huh. just wait for what happens afterwards, because that's the best part. <laughs> I like the, how you have the screwdriver. Dude, it's hard. This is... it, was, it was hard. I couldn't get it in. And then I put it on backwards. I put it on the oh, wrong freaking oh, foot. Oh. <laughs> it's upside down. I was I was so upset. So so angry. Big anger. Well, how how hard was it to get off? <sighs> I, there's no footage of it. It was very hard. And then I, I had a, a, an easier time putting it back on because I kind of got an idea and a feel for how to properly put it in there, which was mm -hmm. feeling like you're about to break it but not breaking it, which sucked. But I have a, a way easier time. There we go. Yay, it's on. Yay! And then I get to do this with with all the layers of paint, which is put this peg back on there. I'm surprised you didn't weather it at the like all together at the end. Um. I thought about it, but I really wanted to get that first layer on there before sealing it. The first layer of that, um, the grime, that kind of caking, yeah, the caking grime on there, and then seal it. So this is kind of me getting it all together so I could continue to weather it. But the struggle bus is real, <laughs> and now it's time to break out the hot water, oh. which sometimes works, sometimes it works. And it honestly works if you like submerge the figure in there, but if it's covered in paint, acrylic paint, yeah, water-based acrylic paint, <laughs> it kind of kind of doesn't work. <laughs> so, time to break out uh, something else as I continue to struggle off camera. Even though I put Zenitsu in the center, 
still struggling is hard, man. No, no, I get it. You gotta, you gotta be, yeah. you gotta be comfortable while you're really, really having a hard time. You do not know true cruelty until you plead against an inanimate object. <laughs> it's really words to live by. <laughs> I, I, dude, it's like bending. I, it's, it's so hard. I could not get it. <laughs> Like, of course, it's got to look a little grimy and stuff, but at the same time, it's like, I, I don't want to break this thing. I'm trying to make this a Christmas present. Hey, it's just, it's free weathering at that point. Oh, no, it wasn't free weathering at this point. It was, you're going to destroy <laughs> this figure or you're going to put it back together. There's only two options. There was no interim. So I break out the hairdryer, right? Mm -hmm. I forgot that that piece was on there and it just flew off. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, using the hairdryer, godsend, dude. My goodness, this this works so well. If you're ever going to take apart and put a, a figure together like this, just just get out a hairdryer and uh, get it super hot. Not so hot that obviously you burn yourself or you melt the plastic, but hot enough that it just kind of squeezes in together. Now look at that. This guy's got full full legs. Leggy legs. Leggy legs. Now it's time to fight with the head. <laughs> I forgot about this. This should be easier. It just, is uh, not. Just push him on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Okay, first I'm going to paint a little bit more, and then I'm going to struggle with the head. I, I forgot. Oh, good. I, add, I forgot the order. Add that more paint. Add, add more paint when you know you're going to have difficulties with well, it. Good. Well, it's inside the mouth, so it's not that big of oh, a deal. Okay. Yeah, I'm just giving him some gingivitis. Some nice pink gums. <laughs> of course. I assume they don't get their vitamin C. Oh, they probably don't get any vitamins. They're like mostly mushroom, according to the lore. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they're like They probably get a lot of vitamins out of the out of the mushrooms then. I'm sure that you they you could eat an orc and get a lot of vitamins out of them. But here we go. Reverse dental work. We must make it worse. Get some of that. Oh uh, yeah, it's nice and nice and gross. Oh yeah, get some nice purples in there. Get some really nasty teeth. Make it look like he's been punched in the mouth a couple times. Yeah, nice and gross. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. Yummy. And then I just take it while I'm there. So this is kind of like a, a really controversial thing is watering down your washes with water because they say it comes out kind of chalky but i mean if you're not doing it over something like metal then i think it's fine like uh, what i'm doing here is that i'm putting some like some of that purple purplish red mm -hmm. on extremities and scars and stuff just to kind of give it a more like oh you just got punched in the ear you just got punched in the head look at these things they look aggravated and bruised and not fun, not fun time having. So, but whatever. The naysayers, screw them. Just do what you like. <laughs> do what you want to do. Make up your own techniques. Lick the paint. <laughs> Actually, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't lick put the it, paint. <laughs> put, put it on via tongue. <laughs> <laughs> do not lick your paints. That is a bad idea. Dry brushing with some black metal. Iron Warriors gives it kind of like a nice textured kind of look. I just used a lot of metal paints on this. I, I, I went to town with metal paints. And then I used that uh, Army Painter roundish brush, mm -hmm. which works really well on the skin. Um, I'm kind of questioning how well it works here. I got a lot of the edges, but I feel that I could have just, if I had had more time, I probably could have just gone with a brush and just hit each edge individually and kind of done a better job than just using the dry brush. <coughs> That's a hot take. Yeah. Spicy take. Yeah, see, and then I go back to do it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hitting all the edges and making it kind of look like there's some scratches and stuff. Getting some of those uh, bigger bolts, a darker metal color around the edges of the arm piece 
Oh, I kind of screwed myself on this too. So I I didn't really look at what the Orc Mega Knob minifigure looked like from uh, Games Workshop. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of going off of my own thing. I'm like, eh, I'm just going to make it look all grimy and orky. Orcs like gross, grimy, scrap metal stuff, right? So my idea was take something kind of aluminum, steel looking, and just make it look like it had been outside getting rusted and rotten and all that fun stuff, which is very orky because, you know, they just believe that stuff works and it works. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took that mentality. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to do whatever works. And then I come to find out that the orc mega knobs had like a really, uh, what feels like standardized color scheme. And it made me sad <laughs> because oh. it was all black metal. <laughs> So you'll kind of see me later on putting a lot more of that that darker metal color over a lot of different things. Oh, sponge time. Spongin' time. That was a Japanese sponge, by the way. But that had a tour over in Japan. I'm just gonna <laughs> cut it. But yeah, you'll see me kind of backpedal here later. Just kind of cutting this sponge that I, I fully intended to use over in Japan. I bought it to wash my dishes, and then I only ever had paper dishes, so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't work out very well, but. This is another cool weathering technique that if you take a sponge and some paint of your choice, or axe white, I'm going to use it to kind of give it some depth to the teeth. You see how it kind of just looks like speckling, speckling kind of stuff? Yeah. I'm just going to use it on the teeth bits, and I'm going to layer it up with some reds. But anyways, your the story with your your with your bed to, oh, to put yes. a, to put a cap onto it. Yes, yes. I don't. We have a suspend. We suspended a bed. Yes, we, we suspended, suspended the bed. bed. I was stepping onto my desk to get onto my bed because I intended to move my desk underneath my bed, add a ladder and then have a paint station on the other side or like a little building station so that I could get down every morning, sit in my chair and be at my computer and then just turn around and I'm turning around in real life and then it would be all of my paint stuff and all my building stuff. Uh, instead, that didn't happen. The roommate in the master bedroom uh, ended up moving out uh, and then I ended up taking the master bedroom. Um, and then because the people of the property like like to just randomly come in a lot, they came in, I don't know, about a month after I'd moved. And I hadn't taken the bed down. I had no real intention to. Um, and they were like, you need to take down the shelf. Uh, and I, I hit them with the, you mean my bed? <laughs> um, <laughs> and they were a little, they were a little taken aback. Um, and they were like, well, you just got to make sure that there's no holes in the wall or ceiling when you move out. And I was like, yes, of course, I will make sure of that. Uh, but they didn't, they didn't know what to do about that one. So if you ever need, you know, more space, don't, don't forget that, um, like loft beds are a really good idea. And if you are confident in your building skills, like I am overconfident, in fact, <laughs> probably more than my abilities call for. Well, I shouldn't say that we did it. So my, my, my confidence is founded. Um, <laughs> then you can, yeah, build a floating loft bed and, you know, maximize your space. So that's my story. I like this gold color, by the way. I like specifically how you dipped the gold into your paint palette and then dipped the, your brush into your little thing of water and the gold hung there for a second. And then we moved frames and it's gone now. But oh, it's it's pretty cool. It does that with any paint. Like if you just gingerly dip into a water cup with some paint, it just kind of does that like dispersal. Yeah, it's really fun. This uh, this gold that I use on that front plate, it's gonna mean nothing here in a minute because I'm gonna go over it with red. <laughs> There's a lot of backpedaling, dude. Like like I said, I, I made it through like 90% of this without ever looking at the original source material. And then the second that I looked at the original source material, I screwed myself because I was now like, oh no, it's incorrect. This isn't the right color. Does he only care if it's source material correct? Oh no, 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 he doesn't. He yeah, does. I, I do. 
You, oh, care. okay. Oh, okay. I was like, you could just as long as it looks good, who cares? But okay. so, like, my my whole thing about making gifts for people is this: if I can't look at what I've made and go <clears throat> feasibly, oh, I could sell this and it would be appropriate, then I would never gift it to somebody. Like, if I can't can't look at myself in the eye and go like, this is a good product. I made a good product. I will never give it to somebody as a gift. Because, yeah, I, growing up, there was a lot of times where I was like, I'm not a gift for this person. And my parents kind of tried to gingerly tell me, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that without telling me <laughs> that I sucked at doing the thing that was, <laughs> that I was trying to give that person. And now as an adult, I kind of understand. And it's like, yeah, you know, you can give handmade gifts if you're particularly good at the thing that you're handmaking. <laughs> But if you are like, oh, I'm going to crochet this figure and I've never crocheted before in my entire life, I am not going to give that as a gift to somebody. Yeah. Straight up. I'm not going to give somebody the first attempt at something. That's just a me thing. Maybe somebody out there has done this and they are they're listening to me and going like, man, this guy's a dick. But uh, <laughs> that's just my thoughts on it. I, I, I refuse to give somebody something that I tried on the first attempt. That's just not how this works. So... But, but I mean, so so you got done. So what I'm hearing is you got done with this. Looked close, at the source. Close to bit. done. I got close <laughs> you to got, done. You got close to done with this. Went well. I wouldn't sell this. Looked at the source material and went, well, I can make it look like that, but better. Yes. So what I'm hearing is you didn't like this, and then decided to change all of it. Well, I didn't. It's not that I didn't <laughs> like it. It's just that I. It was one of those things where I was like, I really like where this is going. Da 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 da. And I stupidly looked at the source material and went like, oh no, I've set expectations that weren't there before. Now I must make it better. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was an idiot and I, I, I met <laughs> my heroes and then that was a bad idea. So just, just, I, I should have just, uh, I should have just went with the process, man. I should have just trusted the process, left it alone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Probably would have been a little bit different, but I, 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 su I sullied my final thoughts by looking at the source material i should have just left it alone yeah but but he he liked it this is now post christmas so he liked it at least well, I, hope, good. I hope he did he did did he tell you he liked he, it he told me that he liked it then he either liked it or he's lying and no, he's lying no. that he's not a good friend oh, so no. Oh, no. <laughs> we're just kidding i, I like I this mustard yellow Baylor Brown. It looks like mustard yellow on my screen. It is a very like gross looking yellow. Oh, that was a cool move right there. I uh, overpainted. So what I did is that I just took my thumb and wiped off the overpaint because you can do that when it's still wet. Bam! Pro tips. <laughs> you ever feel like you just... messed up? Just rub your finger over it. <laughs> I just do that anyways, and then I use the smear as weathering. Yeah, that works too. Yeah, Especially just... in this setting. Yeah, this that works very well. Yeah. So you remember I the pack originally? It had like no colors. It was literally just black and red, and now it's got a bunch of different colors. Yeah. It's still good. Hold on, so question. You was the package itself not source material? Um so Yeah, kind of. So the thing with the McFarlane toys is that they'll take like a general idea of what it should look like and kind of go with that. But like color accuracy and stuff like that is not their strong point. Okay. So it was just kind of like an off silvery dark black color. And like, oh, okay. yeah, that is sort of right. But like all the triangles on the front of the armor should have been red. The um, There just should have been a lot more red on it because it's like black and red are the main colors for it. Mm -hmm. And they kind of, it, it just kind of felt like they, I mean, it, it is what it was. It was a, a toy made for mass production. So it had a lot of simple, simple and large colors to it. So, Fair. yeah. And I, I, I wanted to make it better because I can. And I did look at it better. Of course, understand. Stronger. Faster. Stronger, orkier. <coughs> it's red. It goes faster <laughs> by default. <laughs> Red stuff is faster. 
if your stuff is not red, then ours is faster than it. <laughs> by default. By orc logic, yes. I just love they put that into the lore. Oh, it's, it's great. I love it. the collective re it's not even reasoning, collective belief. Yeah. Santa Claus would be just a major deity. To orcs. <laughs> wills him into existence <laughs> that's correct i was actually i was actually listening to a really interesting theological debate about santa being like a major deity because of that because so many people believe in him like uh, un, undeniably faith believe in him kind of a thing and now santa yeah. is like considered a minor deity or something like that it's TikTok, oh. so I'll take it with a grain of salt, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd say I would believe that if like adults believed in Santa. Yeah. But since adults don't believe in Santa and use it as a collective lie to children, whoa, whoa, then... children watch this, maybe they might. It's too late. It's too late. I'm just gonna bleep it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bleep it out just, of post. <laughs> just bleep the entire sentence. Just no, I'm just gonna redub it, and it's just gonna say something like, "We all believe in Santa." Just, <laughs> just re it, 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 just, it, it just cuts the silence in you and is Santa Claus is real. <laughs> he is a deity now. But um, yeah, as I was saying, since 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 of that, I wouldn't call him a, a deity of sorts that's i we used to have this discussion back when slenderman was like super popular what was that 2010 yeah um we used to have discussions like if slenderman existed before or not and he probably didn't beforehand but the collective knowledge of him brings him into existence right yeah and so then you can thus get everybody to believe and trick people into truly believing something because of the collective uh, hive mind. Uh, uh, hi yeah. Oh, so here, I'm, I'm pushing so hard. I don't show it, but uh, I showed uh, Tay this. I pushed so hard, I had an imprint of an orc face on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Glorious. Yeah. It's, oh, and there you are with the red. Yep, I backpedaled. This is, this is hardcore backpedaling with all the black as well <laughs> making it real dark did the gold at least like shimmer through the red at all it you know it kind of gave it like a tinge a metallic tinge to it because i did thin it out enough that it wasn't opaque i think is the word i it, think yeah, i think yeah, yeah. opaque it was okay it was yeah it wasn't perfectly opaque it was a little translucent You're right exactly yeah so you can kind of see yeah. it right there Oh, okay. Yeah. I I went too fast. You'll see it in the final product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah, it's it still has like some shimmering gold on it, so it kind of looks like it was a brassy color originally, and then they painted it red, and then the paint started falling off, which is what I want. This is exactly yeah. what we're looking for here. Yeah, yeah. Also, I want to congratulate you, real quick. I just realized that we are filming in widescreen. Yeah, yeah. No, I um, I exclusively did widescreen <coughs> and. I, uh, I found out how to rotate everything. So if it wasn't a oh. widescreen, then I rotated it so that we're now YouTube compatible. Perfect, perfect. I mean, we were YouTube compatible before if you were watching on your phone yeah. or a tablet. Yeah, but, but now it's, it's good for everybody. So that's, that's exactly yeah. what I wanted. <laughs> yes. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna start working on the other other uh, arm. Okay, so real quick, why is one arm darker than the other? Okay, so one arm has had the wash on it, and now this other arm, I'm gonna start building up the layers to make it the same color as the other arm. So first off, I do a bunch of dry brushing to kind of build up the base and make it a little bit lighter. And then what I'm gonna start doing is that I'm gonna start doing some glazes with the same color. Mm. And what that does is that it doesn't completely take away the wash, the darkness from the wash, and it builds up the color even more on the areas that already have that initial color on there. So I'm trying to make it this kind of like pale greenish color, uh, mm -hmm. just because I think the orcs look better in that color. I, I like more pale green orcs, 
Some people like really dark green orcs. I think dark green orcs are dumb, so... <laughs> Straight up. When they had the newest uh, orc line come out, the Beast Snaza... Beast Snaga... something or other boys... Mm. I, I don't play orcs, so... I, I'm not, like, fully into all their stuff. I just think that their lore is cool. But once those guys came out, they were almost <laughs> all exclusively light green. I'm like, yeah, that's the orc color. That's proper, <laughs> proper orc color. Doesn't play orcs. His <laughs> that, his opinion actually doesn't matter. It, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, like whoever whoever plays orcs, they they can do whatever color they want. But I just think that the like the dark green crayon color orc looks stupid. So. And if I fight you on the battlefield and you have dark green crayon and colored orcs, I will fight you twice as hard because I don't like that color for <laughs> orc. I'll, I'll make sure my orcs, when I eventually paint them, considering I've owned them for like over a year now. Are dark green um, crayon orc. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, I'm not even going to make them green. Make them purple. I'm just. <laughs> I almost kind of want to make them like red. Yeah. I feel like a, I feel like a, a red orc, and then I don't even know what I do with their armor. But you just make them like silver or something like that. Red orcs, red skinned orcs with the silver armor. I think that <laughs> that color combination works well. Yeah, that probably would. That'd be kind of cool. They'd look like uh, maybe, Oni or something like that. Yeah, maybe make them a little. Ooh, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, if I made them like Oni looking orcs. Yeah, give them some horns. That'd be really sick. Or convert yeah. some horns on them. Yeah. Make up your own faction of orcs. These are the orcs of the rising sun. <laughs> they go really I fast because they're red. <laughs> well, now I actually have a good idea for them. Okay. Yeah, see, here we go. Uh, that arm now kind of looks a lot like the other arm. He's struggling some more. Okay. Uh, the audio How is gone, you, but you... it popped really loudly. <laughs> uh. You mentioned you did a glaze. How did you make the glaze? So you take the paint, it's a layer paint, and mm -hmm. I put a lot of uh, water in it, and it just makes it where it has, it becomes really translucent without losing the pigment. So it's pretty good. Pulling on some pieces. This guy's coming to the so end. <laughs> how, how, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you again because I'm rude like that. So. I know. So how does adding all the water make it a glaze and not a wash? Uh, so... Because that's what I thought, like a wash, because I know, I know like oil washes, right? You take a little bit of oil right. and then you take your solvent and you mix it all up and you thin it out super, super, super thin so that you go over it and then you dab it off with your, with your brush. And that was my understanding with acrylics is you just added, yeah, a bunch of thinner or like a little bit of water. It's it's basically so in it. ratio. Like you just have to get the right ratio. Um, okay. Normally you want to use so not you want to use like um, the pigmentless paint um, to do glazes and stuff. But I mm -hmm. you can use water too. You just have to have the right consistency. Like once you do it enough times, you'll kind of see how much it takes. But if yeah. you are new to doing glazes, it's best to use a pigmentless paint. Uh, Games Workshop's one is Lamy and Medium. And what it does, it just makes it really kind of clear without losing the pigmentation on it. And then you can make hmm. it into a glaze. And, and a wash is basically like you watered it to all high hell. Like there's, it's just really, really, really watery. And that'll work as a wash. So it's just pretty much how much you put on there. But yeah, you can kind of see, I missed it. The front of the, the little red piece is still kind of shiny. Oh, and I, I oh, went okay. back to I'll... my sponging technique for yeah. metal. Look at those pistons, man, they're shiny. <laughs> Good, yeah, those are nice looking. Nice looking pistons, nice looking glutes on him too. Some buns and thighs. Get some orange wash to make it look I'm nice also rest. enjoying <laughs> I'm also enjoying the thighs in the upper right. Buns and thighs. Oh, oh yeah, my... <laughs> that is my, my stint. I just have like a, a one of the Megami device figures just kind of like uh, presenting at the paint. I'll have to send a picture. <laughs> about, oh no, I did send a picture. I was like, oh yeah, this is my, my lovely assistant. But I don't think I saw it. You have to send it again. Yeah. Uh,
maybe at least i don't remember it yeah maybe later we'll start doing some Mega me devices but on my roster right now i have a lot more gundam to get through i'm gonna do that pat labor preview into the future maybe do some pat labor maybe do some gundam Leave me. Or you mean we're not go- we're not going back to the wing? The wing's now off. The no, table no, no. Wing while. wing is next. <laughs> wing is next. Oh, okay. I will do wing. I've I've <laughs> stopped. I've not done wing for almost a year. We need to do wing. <laughs> and here we go. So here's a reminder of what it looked like. And we're gonna get a good full spin, kind of burn it into memory, and then bang! What it looks like now. Nice. I think it was a good improvement. I think it looks better. It's got a lot more, the metal has a lot more kind of life to it. Looks like it's been through battles and stuff like that. Kind of nice. I think so at least. So what, what, do, you, what do you rate it? What do you rate it? What's your final rating? <clears throat> My final rating? It's nice looking. I wish I could see it a bit closer. Like I wish I could hold it so I could see that finer detail. Uh. I assume I assume it's there because considering I know your work, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it seven wogs out of ten on this one. Woo! Seven wogs. Seven. What? Way. Way. I don't know if what feedback I can offer, if any. Yeah. I guess I can I guess I can say why then and give it a full ten. Um. Oh, I guess the video's done. Yeah, the so. video's over. There's no more. There's no more, <laughs> no more just, audio left. It ends. It ends with that. So. Just <laughs> Seven out of ten. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the only thing, the only thing that I'm like, this is what I would have done more, but I don't know what your time constraints were, is added some more scratches to the red face. Like it, what it, like on his back, his banner. Oh, yeah. And then some more, maybe blood-looking streaks on his uh, uh, weapons. Yeah, I kind of wanted to do some blood and, and gore and guts and stuff, but yeah, it's it was definitely like a I wanted to get this out and get this over before Christmas. So yeah, it kind of yeah, it kind of fell on that. But yeah, it, he's he's very clean, if not very dirty. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it does look good though. I like him. Well, thank you. Wig, wig. <laughs>